Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. This is Sohini from South Bay, California and today's topic is this. Week one of build your own research internship, the deliverable. Let's get straight right to it. So today we are looking at literature review for the topic that I selected, which is the advances of deep learning in medical imaging. So the medical images that I am actually looking at in this case uh, pertain to retinal fundus images that look like here. Uh, and this is the image of the interior surface of the eye opposite to the lens where the information or the vision is actually then transferred back to the brain as perception. Now, based off of pathology that can actually be acquired on the retina, you could go from normal vision to patchy vision, such as here, which is age-related macular degeneration, or extreme patchy vision, which is which can be caused by severe diabetic retinopathy, or you could have re, you know reduced field of view, which is shown here by glaucoma. The important aspect of retinal fundus images and pathologies corresponding to them is that in most cases, 90% of these pathologies are actually reversible if detected early. So if we can come up with automated ways of diagnosing these in, in a early stage, then uh, it, it's very easy to go through a treatment plan for, for such people. Now, what does an anatomy of the, of the human retina actually look like? So the, the, the key areas of interest, it's of course, it's the bright patch right in the middle, which is the optic disc. Uh, and I, like I had mentioned in my, in my last week's video that Retina is actually a biometric, so understand every single person's retina is actually going to look different. The blood vessels, the structures are going to look different. However, the anatomy, the basic anatomy remains the same. So there's this bright optic disc, then there are these major blood vessels, and of course there are some thin blood vessels. And if there are lesions or pathologies, then the presence of that you will feel either in presence of bright lesions, which are just the heart exudates or cardinal spots, or they could actually be red lesions, which is uh, your hemorrhages or clots in the eye or, or microaneurysms, which are just smaller clots. So you're looking at either brighter regions of interest or uh, you know, redder regions of interest for pathology. One thing of interest here is retinal images are one of the few medical images that are colored which is they have RGB. Otherwise, most of the other uh, medical images, such as x-rays, MRI, CT, everything, they're generally single plane. So uh, that's why this is easier or this is uh, easier to understand uh, rather than uh, the, the single plane images. However, one project idea could very easily be in order to color or, or take, the, take the, the structural formats, uh, how you color uh, this RGB plane. So in order to take an MRI image to so then a three-dimensional image. That could be an interesting project idea, just if anyone else out there wants to look at something like that. Now, the first paper that I am reviewing today is going to be one of the papers that I wrote uh, during my graduate time, and that's called for blood vessel segmentation. And this is the paper right here, blood vessel segmentation by fundus images by major vessel extraction and sub vessel classification. So what happens is most of the of the, of the methods that are, are looking at segmenting the blood vessels, they are looking at it in, in order to, to, to find uh, structures of very fine blood vessels that can then be indicative of neovascularization and that is a strong indicator of severe diabetic retinopathy that means you definitely need treatment um, now one the, the most of most methods what they do is is you're doing semantic segmentation right so you take uh, an, an image and you're extracted extracting these you know black and white images where the region of interest or the blood vessels is your foreground everything else is your background now, you can easily go about doing a per pixel segmentation. However, that is pretty computationally intensive. And also the blood, blood vessels or the neighborhood features for any pixel which belongs to this thick blood vessel is going to be different uh, from those of a thinner blood vessel. So in order to accommodate the method, uh, how, how this uh, paper explains it, is first you extract the major blood vessels using two separate mechanisms. One is uh, high, high, the high pass filtering and the other one is called top hand transfer, transformation. So I am going to link uh, the, the Wikipedia link for the best explanation of top hat transformation in an image uh, in the description box below. But once you have extracted blood vessels by both methods, what you do is you find an intersection. 
right? And all the pixels that do not belong to the intersection, which are actually a part of the union, they are then subjected to classification. So you you create this, this classifier for only the fine blood vessels uh, using, of course, some spatial uh, features, uh, spatial and, and color and textural features. So at the end, this intersection is actually combined with these fine vessels that get uh, classified from this process in order to get to your final segmented blood vessels. So that is the method that is explained in this paper. Now, one of the major problems in, in, in retinal image and segmentation of the blood vessels is the impact of noisy labels. Now think about it, if you're looking at a, a, a computer vision example where you're, you're segmenting pedestrians or a car, that's easy. I mean, it's relatively easy for our brain to you know, fine tune and say, yeah, this is a car and this is not. However, as, as I mentioned last week, in order to hand annotate uh, th these these regions of interest, it's actually pretty hard uh, by itself. So you will see in a lot of cases, so this uh, is actually images from uh, a public data set, and I will share the public data sets with you in, in a moment, uh, because remember, we, we talked about two things. The paper is important, then the code base is important, and data is important. So I'm just going over the, the papers first, and then I will show you the code base and the data. So you will see that there are three kinds of data set that I'm using. So this is drive, and then there's a stair, and then there, there's this chase data set. So you see that between the first and the second observer, so in all these data sets, every image has been annotated by at least two human observers. And you will see that there is a relative difference. So sometimes, um, you know, the, the, the one observer might actually notice uh, a region of interest differently. And you will see, for instance, a big example is in the stair image where, uh, you know, the, the central part has been absolutely left out by one observer, but the other observer has actually caught this. So what's going to happen is if you train with respect to one ground truth, your system might get, you know, very fine tuned to only look at such similar uh, outcomes. However, uh, as soon as you now start evaluating with respect to the second observer, your performance might actually degrade. So uh, noisy labels or annotations actually play a huge deal in, uh, in these medical images. So now let's look at another method that uses deep learning for segmentation of blood vessels. Now, as we know, deep learning methods typically require a huge amount of uh, training images to, to learn from because the number of parameters within that network is generally, uh, you know, tens of, uh, tens of hundreds of thousands or sometimes it could even be millions. So what we do is from each and every one of these 20 images belonging to the retinal uh, image stack, which is the drive, stare and the chase data sets that I will cover in a minute. What we do is we extract 48 by 48 patches uh, and these are overlapping patches with this with a certain amount of stride the the width and height remain consistent so you actually end up extracting several patches from the same image so for from 20 images we get around 190,000 patches so 90% of these images are now used for training and the remaining 10% for validation and the model that is used in this case is called the unit model which is pretty well studied in the medical imaging uh, realm and it applies stochastic gradient descent along with 150 epochs with a batch size of 32. Now, the unit model is a pretty standard encoder and decoder uh, combination model. And what happens is the input is a three-plane image followed by convolutions and pooling. And this just shows four such layers. And after that, there is a straightening or, or flattened layer followed, of, followed by which there is transposed convolutions to bring the flattened layer back to the original image size. This transposed convolutions are often uh, confused to be deconvolutions, but there is no deconvolution operation in a deep learning model. They are always transposed convolutions. Now, what we do is, again, we, we train on a certain uh, number of images and we test on the remaining images. And for stair data set, because there is a lack of data, there is only 20 images, we do this uh, uh, leave one out cross validation using 90-10 split. So let's look at a comparative assessment between the previous machine learning model and this method that, that we presented today. What we see is that the machine learning model and the deep learning model have pretty, com pretty consistent and comparable accuracies, which is all in the 95% uh, uh, range. However, the only significant improvement of the deep learning model over the machine learning model is in the AUC or the area under the ROC, risk receiver operating characteristic curve. 
And, and what happens here, what this uh, metric essentially shows is that the deep learning method is more resistant to thresholding rather than the machine learning model here. One thing to notice, although, that the deep learning method, of course, takes a huge amount of training hours, of course, uh, but of course, the, the, the test time is 0 0.2 seconds only. However, uh, the machine learning model is pretty consistent in its, in its training and test times, which is 3 to 6 seconds only. So what are the conclusions that we can draw from this? So we see that the performance are pretty comparable. So that means if we have domain information that is telling us the region, color, intensity, and gradient-based features are good enough, then they are actually good enough. Uh, here, the, the important thing which is noteworthy is, again, the materials and methods are, are described. And this is the figure that I previously mentioned. One thing that is of... of you know, importance in this paper is it does a feature selection. So uh, about 57 pixel based features are, are extracted, followed by only the top features are, are selected. And this is using the minimal redundancy maximum relevance criteria. It's also called the MRMR criteria. And the method is clearly laid out how this MRMR is implemented to indicate just the top features uh, and, and not the entire uh, feature set. So this might be very significant if you're using or if you're working on, on some machine learning problem that requires feature learning. So please do check out this paper. The other one that I mentioned is the segmentation of blood vessels with deep learning networks. Uh, like I mentioned, it takes the image into a lot of subsections, uh, like so. And in this case, it's 27 by 27 training patches. And the outcome, it's actually fully convolutional neural network uh, to then finally output uh, the, the region of importance, which is the blood vessel in, in this case, right? So that is what is being uh, provided. So please do check out this paper as well. Um, so now let me tell you about the data sets. So the first one is called the drive. Uh, then there's the stair, and finally there's this chase uh, data set. All three of them uh, have annotations, manual annotations, and two manual annotations per images. Uh, again, these are very well known in the in the retinal medical imaging community. So please do check them out if you want to, you know, use the it, it for your own project. Uh, the code base that I did mention again, uh, I'm going to link that as well. And this is the one that divides all of the images into 48 by 48 patches and followed by uh, training and testing. This actually shows a comparative assessment with respect to the other machine learning method that I mentioned. Uh, all of this code will be used as one of the baseline in the weeks to come. I also did want to throw out there is one of the more recent work is actually called the DDR. And this data set is released by Baidu. It is fairly new. It was released last year. And if you go to the Google Drive, uh, then it has uh, uh, several batches of, of labels data. So if you are serious about retinal imaging and projects on it, please do check out this data set as well. Thank you and good luck. Hey, so you're still here. Don't forget to give a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and share this video.